Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to a slightly different magic video today. I stumbled upon this website called Urza's Artificial Intelligence, which uses AI to generate random Magic the Gathering cards. And what's unique about this website is that it also has an advanced options feature where we can manually input the name, the mana cost and the types of the card that we're about to generate. So I thought it would be a fun idea to turn some well-known Pokémon into Magic the Gathering cards, and I've prepared a list of about 50 Pokemon from the first generation, including their mana costs and types. For some of these, of course, I had to use my best judgment, because not every Pokemon translates well into an existing creature type, but either way, this should be a wild ride. So our first Pokemon is going to be Bulbasaur, of course, number one in the Pokedex, and I've chosen a mana cost of two and a green. Of course, it's a creature, and then for the creature type, I'm going with Plant Beast. You can see the art gradually being generated. And there we go, Bulbasaur, 2 and a green for a 2-2 plant beast, can zoom in on the text box, saying at the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one plus one counter on Bulbasaur. So yeah, overall pretty realistic card design and seems pretty powerful as well. Also has a pretty long flavor text that we can read if we want. But let's go on to the next card, which is going to be Ivysaur. We're gonna go up the list here, and Ivysaur remains a plant beast and will make it cost 2 and double green. Okay, Ivysaur, 4 mana, 4-4 four, four with Vigilance and Enrage, saying whenever Ivysaur is dealt damage, exile the top card of that player's library face down. Hmm, not sure if that works within the rules, but uh, you also gain life equal to that card's mana value. So the Enrage ability is a little strange, but overall a 4 mana, 4-4 four, four Vigilance isn't bad, so Ivysaur gets a thumbs up. And next up it's a time for Venusaur, which will cost 3 and triple green, so 6 mana total, still a plant beast. Okay, there's Venusaur, and the art definitely resembles the real Venusaur, especially if you squint a little bit. It's a 3-3 that can tap to destroy target artifact or enchantment, which is definitely a useful ability. A 3-3 just a little bit small for a 6 mana creature, especially in green. And the flavor text reads, its bolts are like coils of hot iron, which sounds more like the flavor text of a red card, but overall Venusaur also seems quite decent. Next up is Charmander, which will cost two and a red, and I could make it just a lizard, but I think we'll add the elemental creature type as well, just to kind of make it even more of a fire card as opposed to just a normal lizard like you would find in real life. And there's Charmander, looking incredibly adorable, a 3-3 that when it enters the battlefield deals 1 damage to each creature and each player, which is also a pretty powerful ability, especially if your deck doesn't have too many 1-toughness creatures itself. And the flavor text reads, they swim with all the sudden swiftness of their enigmatic friends. I didn't know Charmander could swim, but certainly a cool card overall. Next up is the evolution, Charmeleon, which will cost 2 and double red, still an elemental lizard. And there's Charmeleon, with power and toughness each equal to the number of lands we control. Usually more of a green ability, but could still fit within red, and says it speaks with a single breath and it finds itself constantly angry, which also kind of fits with a real Pokémon, so another great design. Next up is Charizard, which will cost 3 and triple red, so 6 mana total as well, and will make this an elemental dragon as it strongly resembles dragons in magic. Okay, there we have Charizard, and the art strongly resembles the real deal, it's almost uncanny. A 6-6 six, six with flying, and when Charizard deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of their library face down, you may look at and play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. So a very powerful ability that we've definitely seen before, usually more of a blue-black ability as opposed to red, but I could still see it working with this powerful 6-mana dragon. Quite happy with how this one turned out. And then it's time for the final starter Pokémon, Squirtle for 2 and a blue, and we'll make this an elemental turtle for similar reasons as the uh, Charmander being an elemental lizard. 
and there's Quirtle. And yeah, definitely it looks like a turtle to me. A 1-3 with flash. And for one on a blue, Squirtle gets plus one, plus zero oh until end of turn, saying it tastes like a blast of freezing cold fire. So it kind of has a bit of a dragon thing going on here with a fire breathing ability, which is typically seen in red. Maybe because it's an elemental, which is often a red creature type. But overall, another nice design and a 1-3 with flash you could definitely see in blue. Time for Squirtle to evolve into War Turtle, which will cost 2 and double blue, 4 mana total, still an elemental turtle. And there we have War Turtle, a 4-4 with flash, so it kept its flash ability, but it also has Echo for 4 and a blue, which is a pretty big drawback, because at the beginning of your upkeep, if this came under your control since at the beginning of your last upkeep, sacrifice it unless you pay its Echo cost. So it's going to be a 9 mana investment to keep a War Turtle in play, but it is a 4-4 with flash, which is pretty decent overall, especially in blue. And then now it's time for Blastoise, will cost 3 and triple blue, and once again, an elemental turtle. Okay, there's Blastoise, a 3-3 with flash and flying. And whenever Blastoise becomes blocked by a creature, you may draw a card, which is not a bad ability. Although 3-3 flyer for 6, even with flash, is a little bit on the pricey side. And the ocean was formerly deep, but now it is more like the bottom of the sea. So some very deep insight here in the flavor text. Next up, let's try Butterfree, which I think has a black and green color identity, as it's kind of an insect that has some poisonous abilities, and uh, we'll make it an insect as its creature type. And there's Butterfree, and I'm amazed that it actually picked up on Butterfree being a butterfly, as we can see from the art. A 5-4 flyer that for a single black mana can regenerate, which I guess sort of fits with Butterfree having some life-leeching abilities that it could regenerate itself. Let's try Pidgey next, just a single white for hopefully a cheap bird, and we'll see what the AI generates here. And there we have Pidgey, a 1-1 flyer, and for two and a white we can sacrifice Pidgey to exile target card from a graveyard. Bit of a random ability, but gives us some nice graveyard hate, I guess. So yeah, Pidgey, not bad. Let's see what happens if we evolve Pidgey into Pidgeotto, double white, still a bird. Pidgeotto turned into a 2-2 flyer, and for a single white we can sacrifice Pidgeotto, and then target creature gains flying until end of turn. So we can maybe give one of our large ground creatures flying to get a lethal attack in, which may be worth it. And the flavor text reads, it's so pretty to see a beauty, which uh, you cannot disagree with. Pidgeotto has one final evolution, Pidgeot, and will make it cost triple white. Turned into a 2-2 flyer, and for 1 and white we can sacrifice Pidgeot to exile target creature, which is certainly an ability we've seen before in white, so not unreasonable. And the flavor text reads, its flight makes it angry, which is probably why it wants to be sacrificed. Next up we can try Ekans, everyone's favorite snake, and we'll make it cost 1 and a black, and of course a snake. And Ekans turned into a 1-1 with a Death Touch, which is totally reasonable for a black 2-drop. Could have also made it into a green creature or even a black green creature, but I think the 1-1 Death Touch suits Ekans nicely. Let's evolve Ekans into Arbok, which will cost 3 and double black for a snake. A 5-5 with Flash, and when Arbok enters the battlefield, you may put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library, which is a pretty usual black ability. And the flavor text, it wants to jump and dance. Who doesn't, Arbok? Who doesn't? Now it's time for the highly anticipated Pikachu, which I kind of struggled to classify whether it was supposed to be white or red, so I settled on just making it red and white at the same time, and this is going to be an elemental mouse. Wow, there we have Pikachu, and look at that art. It's a 2-2, saying whenever Pikachu blocks a creature, that creature gains first strike until end of turn. So that's a bit of a drawback, giving opposing creatures first strike. So not necessarily the best to drop, but uh, just looking at that art, I cannot turn it down. And let's evolve Pikachu into Raichu, which will cost two, a white and a red. And there we have Raichu, and once again, the art strongly resembles the real Pokemon. This a 2-2 with Flash and Flying. Flash I could see, but flying is a little bit strange on an elemental mouse. But when Raichu enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, which actually synergizes with the Flash ability, letting us play Raichu at instant speed. We could surprise pump up one of our creatures. So the overall card design isn't bad, even though the flying is a little bit strange. Then we'll move on to Vulpix, the Firefox, not the browser, but the Pokemon. 
a 1-1 with haste, which is definitely a very rent ability. Nowadays we would probably see like a 2-1 for 2 mana with haste, since a 1-1's a little bit on the weak side, but the overall card makes sense. Let's evolve Vulpix into Ninetales, which will cost 3 and double red. It's a 3-3, and whenever Ninetales deals damage to a player, flip Ninetales. This is not a double-sided card, so I'm not sure what we're flipping. The flavor text also goes pretty hard. Those who take a single blow to the throat can be healed with nothing but a bath. Well, let's move on to Zubat, the one drop that you can get rid of, and of course a bat. Zubat turned into a 1-1 flyer, and for Tuna Black we can sacrifice Zubat to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Pretty reasonable for a one drop. And what you're fighting is Zubat's way of life. Zubat evolves into Golbat, which will make two and double black. Turned into a 2-2 flyer, and for a single black, Golbat gets plus one plus O until end of turn, which is certainly an ability we've seen before in black on various shade creatures. And then the flavor text reads, the leafy clouds are not a welcome sight on a sunny day, which is pretty strange since Golbat spends most of its days inside caves, so it probably doesn't care too much about the sun. Now it's time for Meowth, the two and a white creature, and of course a cat. Meowth a 2-2 cat, and whenever Meowth blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn, so kind of like the Bushido mechanic. So once again a pretty successful card design. Meowth evolves into Persian, which will cost three and double white. Persian a 3-3, saying as long as it's neither a human nor a dinosaur, it gets plus two plus two. Well, I guess that means it's a 5-5, and in case of lions, this one never dies. It's another very strange one here. Then I also really wanted to see what Psyduck could turn into. We'll make it cost two and a blue. And since it's kind of a psychic duck, we'll make it a bird wizard, since we don't have ducks in magic, at least not yet. And Psyduck turned into a 1-1 flyer that when it enters the battlefield, target player mills three cards. So I could definitely see the connection between milling and being a psychic bird, although I probably would not give Psyduck flying and its roaring call is both disconcerting and irresistible. Next we'll try Mankey, which is definitely a red creature as it's always angry, we'll make it cost a single red, and for creature types I chose Boar and Monkey, as it's kind of a pig monkey, but pig is not a real creature type in magic yet. There's Mankey, and the art is pretty special, a 1-1, and as long as Mankey is equipped it gets plus one plus oh, so could definitely see it working within an equipment theme. And in a forest, one bite from a forest is like an entire meal. Okay, let's evolve Mankey into Primeape, which will cost one and double red. Turned into a 2-2, and whenever Primeape deals damage to a player, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Primeape. Could have maybe benefited from haste, otherwise it's reminiscent of the Slith creatures from the original Mirrodin. We'll move on to Tentacool, which will cost a blue and a black, as it does have kind of that poison type as well, and of course a jellyfish. Tentacool's a 2-2, saying at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. That seems a little bit too powerful, so probably wouldn't see a card printed like that anytime soon. And the answer is now dead. What can you say? Let's try Ponita next, which will cost one and a red for an elemental horse. A 3-2 with flash, and when Ponita enters a battlefield it deals three damage to any target. Wow, this card is busted, and the dream of a perfect mount is hard to find indeed. Next we'll try Grimer, two and a black could also potentially make it green for an ooze creature. And there we have Grimer, a 2-2 that when it enters a battlefield gains two life. It's a pretty simple design, but nothing wrong with it. Let's evolve a Grimer into Muck, which will cost three and double black. A 5-5, and when Muck enters a battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a permanent unless they discard a card. So overall, pretty reasonable design. Pretty excited to see what the Ghastly turns into, which is just a single black for a spirit. A Ghastly turned into a 1-1 flyer, which makes sense, and for two and a black we can sacrifice a creature, and then target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. So pretty reasonable for limited. And the flavor reads, it didn't bite you, but it might bite a few more of you instead. I want to see the full evolution, so let's evolve into Haunter for one and double black. 
Wow, the art on this is awesome, resembling the real Pokémon for sure. A 2-2 flyer saying whenever Haunter deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library face down. You may look at it and play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. So that's definitely an ability we've seen before in black or blue-black, and often printed on the two-powered flyers for three mana. So this card could easily be a real magic card, and if it were printed today, no one would bat an eye. Let's evolve this one all the way and make a Gengar, and for some reason I want to add a red to Gengar, as it does have these Rakdos vibes. And there we have Gengar, a 3-3 flyer, and for a single black it gets plus one plus so until end of turn, so your typical shade ability. So a little bit pricey, but on a 3-3 flyer that ability can certainly add up. Next we'll try Onyx, and we'll make Onyx into a 6 mana colorless artifact creature, and then the subtype could either be a serpent or a worm, but let's go for worm, as serpent often has kind of the blue connotation. And there's Onyx, a 5-5 trampler for 3 mana, worm creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and the great worm is known for its feeding habits. Next we'll try Drowsy, and hear me out, I decided to make Drowsy into a white elephant, wizard. Okay, not sure what's going on in the art, maybe wearing a party hat. Drowsy is a 2-2 creature, and when it enters a battlefield you may search your library for any card, reveal it and put it into your hand and then shuffle. So this is incredibly busted, essentially a demonic tutor stapled onto a 2-2 creature in white no less. And the flavor text reads, we've moved on, but not for a while. Maybe a reference to it taking a while for someone to search their library, who knows. Next up is Krabby the Crab which should be pretty straightforward. Crabby costs 1 and a blue for an 0-3 Crab with a Defender, which checks out, and for 1 and a blue we get to draw a card. That's an incredibly powerful mana sink ability and would typically cost a lot more, and sometimes it goes away, sometimes it doesn't. Next is Execute, 2 and a green, and this is a pretty interesting creature type. I turn it into a Wizard Egg, as it does have that psychic ability as well. Okay, I can definitely see some eggs scattered throughout art. A 1-1 one, one, saying whenever Execute deals damage to a player, put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature. So a little bit on the weak side as a 3 mana 1-1. One, one. This one's probably interesting enough to evolve into Executor, which will cost 3 and double green, for a Tree Folk Wizard Egg. Okay, the art on this is pretty interesting. I can see a wizard in the background, there's a tree in the foreground, and they're both sort of sitting in a bird's nest, so that's maybe the reference to the egg part. And at the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of target's artifact creature token. Activate only as a sorcery. So pretty narrow ability, but there are some artifact creature tokens out there that we could copy, so in those decks it could actually be okay. And all over the world, the eggs of dreams are rising. Next up we'll try Hitmonchan, which is a red creature, and I'm gonna make it into a human warrior, because it does kind of have human features, so it might resemble a human the most. And there's Hitmonchan, and looking at the art, it kind of looks like it has Hitmonchan's face at the very least. A 3-3 saying when Hitmonchan enters a battlefield it deals 2 damage to each creature. So not a bad ability, and a pretty dark flavor text saying all dead leaves the earth and lies scattered in the crumbled snow. Next up is Jinx, which is another humanoid creature, so we'll turn it into a human wizard, and since it has that ice type we'll also make it into a blue creature. Okay, there's Jinx, the art's a little bit disturbing, but it's a 2-2 flyer, and when Jinx enters a battlefield, to return target creature to its owner's hand. So your typical Mana War ability, stapled onto a 2-2 flyer, so a totally reasonable card. And Jinx, one look at his eyes is enough to make him stop and listen. Now is the moment we've all been waiting for, it's time for Magikarp, single blue for a fish. While it does have a striking resemblance with a real Magikarp, it's an 0-1, which also checks out, and a Magikarp is all colors and types are that its owner are. Okay, that takes a second to process, but uh, sure, I guess if it has all colors and types that I am, it's also human, and uh, probably white, I would have to say. And Gyarados is pretty angry, so we'll make it cost 4 a blue and a red, and that one can be a serpent. 
Okay, there we have Gyarados, a 5-5 that costs 1 generic mana, less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard, which is often an ability we see on blue-red creatures. It also has Flying, which also totally checks out, as Gyarados does indeed have Flying. Next up we'll try Ditto, which should be a pretty fun one. Can make it into a Shapeshifter, which is perfect. And here we have Ditto, an 0-3 with Changeling, which makes a ton of sense for a Shapeshifter, so it has all creature types. And then for one on a blue, put target creature on top of its owner's library. An incredibly powerful ability, also probably should cost a little bit more to activate. And the flavor text reads, he seems determined to save the world. Isn't that nice? Next we can try one of the prehistoric creatures, Kabuto, costs a single blue and has a pretty rare creature type in magic, a Trilobite. And there's Kabuto, a 1-1, saying whenever a creature you control deals comma damage to a player, draw a card. Wow, this is busted. And first the hard way, then the soft way. Whatever that means. But yeah, this card is totally broken. Should at the very least say when one or more creatures deal combo damage. Even then it would probably be a little bit too strong for one drop. Let's evolve Kabuto into Kabutops. And I kind of want to make it into a blue-black creature. So we can also add the Spectre creature type. As Spectres are often depicted with Scythes in Magic. So that should work out. Okay, Kabutops is pretty exciting, a 4-5 flyer, and whenever Kabutops deals combat damage to a player, exile target creature an opponent controls. So this totally fits with kind of the specters that grant a nice ability when they hit the opponent, and at 6 mana the payoff should be there, and this certainly delivers. Then I want to try at least one of the legendary birds, so we'll go with Moltres, 4 and double red, for a legendary elemental bird. A 3-3 flyer and for single red gets plus one plus zero until end of turn, so the classic fire breathing ability. A little bit on the weak side, 6 mana 3-3 flyer would expect it to be a bit larger to start out, but overall a pretty solid design. Next I'll try Dratini, which I will make into a 2 mana creature and will make it a dragon serpent for its creature types. It turned into a 1-1 flyer that can tap and then target creature gains a flying until end of turn. So not bad for a 2-drop, and of course colorless means it goes into any deck. Let's skip one evolution and go straight to Dragonites at 7 mana, and this will just be a dragon. And there we have Dragonites, a 4-4 flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Pretty simple, not too exciting for 7 mana, but I guess because it's colorless and we can play it in any deck, it would still be a playable card in limited. Okay, and then last but not least, we'll take a look at Mewtwo which will cost 5 and double blue, 7 total, for a legendary creature, and then I'll make it a human wizard as it does have some humanoid features. Okay, that certainly looks like Mewtwo, a 3-4 that can tap to draw a card. So nice card draw engine, a bit pricey at 7 mana, but will certainly pull you ahead if it stays in play for a while, and she becomes as fleet as a rainbow, knowing no fear. Well, this was a nice one to end this video with. Definitely had some memorable cards along the way. Some of my personal favorites include Haunter as one of the better designs. And then we had some of the busted cards like Ponita and Kabuto, Tentacool as well. And then of course Magikarp was another nice one. Let me know in the comments which were your favorite cards. And let me know if this is something you would like to see again in the future. We can do more Pokemon or we can maybe focus on a different series. But these AI generated cards are always a ton of fun. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.